In 2015, I graduated and I obtained my master's degree in molecular biotechnology. And like many other students who get their master's in science, I decided that I want to go for a PhD. So I started PhD, and three months down the line, I started thinking, is this really what I want to do? Well, there was this hobby that I have been developing over the past years, which is science communication, and I have been working on it. So I decided that maybe I don't want to do a PhD, maybe I want to go for science communication. And I really stopped the PhD after three months, and I went for science communication. Now, science communication became incredibly successful, which was not really expected. Right now, there are over 29 million science enthusiasts who follow my science posts on social media, and over 9 billion views on my videos that discuss science, technology, and nature. But it is not the success that I'm here to talk about today. It is the length of the process. Why did it take so long for me to finally realize what I want to do in life? There are millions of students out there who are still confused. They are still not sure whether they want to do what they are doing or whether they want to switch to something else. Partially, it's probably their fault, but the major problem could be the education system. There are four major problems with the education system that I would like to bring to your attention today. But first, I want to see what my audience think about the education system in the countries. So I asked my audience on Facebook, do you think that the education system in your country needs to be fixed? 95% of them said, yes, they think it needs to be fixed. And we're talking about a global audience coming from uh, more than 100 nations. You know all of these guys, of course. They have two things in common. First, they built tech giants. These are companies that have changed the world in one way or another. But they also have another thing in common. They all dropped out of college. Hmm? Well, they dropped out of college because it failed to provide them something they were looking for. It failed to ignite their curiosity and to provide them the environment where they can further develop their interest. They left college, they went and met people who shared the same interest with them, and together they built these companies. You probably have been a victim of group work in school or university. You will notice that we're not grouping students on the basis of their interests. We're grouping them randomly. And this is why one student will end up doing most of the work and the others will just keep watching, because they have been forced into this. It's not their interest. And this is the first problem of the education system. It doesn't take interest into consideration, and interest is very essential for academic achievement. The second problem with the education system is that it relies on outdated textbooks. Have you asked yourself how many times or how often do we update these textbooks? Every five years? Three years, if you are generous. Knowledge is progressing so fast, basic knowledge is changing every day, and textbooks remain the same. And by the time students graduate, they will have missed a huge amount of knowledge that they needed. And so this is a big problem, because then we ask ourselves, why do we have a society of people who believe in conspiracy theories? Well, if you also see the price of textbooks have increased more than 1,200% in the last 40 years, that's more expensive than the healthcare and housing prices. And then many students don't have access to education, so textbooks are not the ideal solution. The third problem is that we have classes, 
were putting classes and were saying that this is a major of human intelligence, class one, two, three. Some students are in class three, but they can actually be in class five. But because of the system, they have to be in class three. And this discourages them, they stay there, and this also delays delays them from graduating sooner and going out there to change the world. Classes do not reflect human intelligence. And they are probably one of the biggest mistakes since the beginning of the education system. The fourth problem is the standardized tests. There are so many tests, so many exams, and there are two major problems with these. First of all, they are becoming so repetitive Students would just have to prepare for two weeks and they all get good grades. Second, they are also a burden because we're making students care about numbers. And that's a problem because by caring about numbers, they have to study to get these good numbers and this distracts them from developing essential skills that they need. So we have four core problems that the current education system has. First, it does not take interest into consideration. Second, it relies on outdated textbooks. It bases intelligence on classes, and it also puts a heavy burden on students with a huge number of exams. So what we need is an effective form of education system, something new, something different that will take us to the next level. For an effective education system, if we truly want to change it, we have to take two things into consideration. First of all, it has to be technology-based. We have been working a lot in developing incredible number of technologies, and we haven't, been, we haven't utilized them, basically. These technologies appear to be underutilized. And so what we need is to integrate technology into the education process so we can have a more effective way of teaching future generations. The second important aspect for any education system to be effective, it has to be personalized, which means each student must receive a personalized education according to their interests and according to their mental capacity. But how can you achieve something like that? You cannot build a school for every student, if we're talking about a personalized education. There are so many parents are, who are now moving to homeschooling, which appears to be more effective than current education system, actually. But we need something universal, something that works for everyone, but still takes interest and mental capacity into consideration. There are so many technologies that have been developed, and I'd like to show you some of them. And these technologies can really change the way education will be in the future. We have audio, I believe. We have sound. remarkable tools and gadgets that have been developed. Most of these have been developed over the past 10 years, actually. And you can see how they make education entertaining and more fun than just reading a textbook. One animation can compensate, I mean, a 40 second animation can compensate for 12 pages from the textbook. This is very effective. Um, although I wish that we had the sound on. <laughs> because we're talking about technology. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> but what I want to tell you is, I mean, take a look. There is a textbook and, you know, with, you know, they are just augmenting the textbook to make it really more entertaining and more fun. Now, some of these technologies would be virtual reality, smart devices, augmented reality, and distance education. These are the ones that exist right now. And there are other technologies that are still under development or they will be developed in the future. Now, imagine these technologies being integrated with machine learning and artificial intelligence.
Yeah, so we have smart devices, we have artificial intelligence and machine learning. We combine all of these together. We could use that to change education. And let me show you how. We have the first problem is that the education system does not ignite interest. So how can we use these technologies to make students more interested in what they're doing? Well, you are browsing the internet, you're trying to check some clothes, and all of a sudden, all the ads on your browser are just about fashion and clothes. What's going on? Well, they knew your interest based on some files they left in your computer, but they knew your interest and they targeted you psychologically. That's why you end up buying. This is exactly the same. To solve the problem of interest here, we have to customize the content. We have the technologies, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Students will not only be using these tools to learn, the tools will also be learning about students. So basically, the students will be browsing content about what they are interested in, and the devices, because they are learning about students, they will provide them content according to what they really want. And this way, we eliminate any distractions, and we make sure that they are on one track. And this is how we can use machine learning and artificial intelligence to solve this problem. The second problem is that textbooks are not updated, so how can we fix that? Well, we provide updated materials. I mean, it's easier to update content online than to actually print a textbook from scratch, because that means also cutting more trees, that will also contribute to increasing the costs. I mean, you receive updates about apps that are on your phones every day, maybe every week, and this is exactly the same. Students will be provided with up-to-date information straight into the devices that they are using, and this is all with the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning. What about classes? How can we solve that? We said, you know, classes are not really a reflection of human intelligence, so how can we fix that? We're going to move to personalized learning. Now, the point of classes is that you move from class one to two so that things will become more complex, yeah? And as you move to future classes, things are becoming increasingly complex. But with the help of machine learning and artificial intelligence, these tools will already adjust the complexity according to your mental capacity because they are learning about you. What are you interested in? Oh, I'm interested in quantum physics. Okay, let's provide you information about quantum physics which level you are at. And then they keep updating the content with more complex information, keeping in mind that it's just within the window of your interest. And this is the important part. We're keeping you within your interest, we're providing you information according to your mental capacity, we're eliminated cl classes, so instead of graduating in 12 years to finish until high school, you could finish that in seven years, which is far better. What about exams? This is something hard to get rid of, actually. Well, exams can also be replaced with something far more powerful. Group work. But not the group work that schools are providing right now. This group work bases the task according to students' interests. Now, we have talked about millions of students browsing content, and we have a system which keeps monitoring each student's behavior and it starts grouping them according to their interest. We take students who are interested in a certain subject, we give them a task. And by the way, this task will not be, oh, go to Wikipedia and uh, you know, write an assignment about somebody. No, this task will be a new thing that you have to create or build. And this is very important because it will help you develop new skills that are needed when you go out there in the field. So if we're replacing exams, how are we going to judge students? Well, we're going to judge students on the basis of their contribution to finishing this task. Because all students will have to use this system, we will monitor how much each one is using it to finish this task. And then we will judge their performance by how much they contributed. And this is very essential because this will help you develop these skills that many schools tend to ignore. Critical thinking, analysis skills, communication skills, and teamwork. Mark Twain said 
thousands of geniuses live and die and discovered, either because of themselves or others. Of course, mostly because of themselves. They might have great ideas, but they don't know how to communicate them. They might have amazing ideas, but they don't know how to work with teams. I remember when I was at the university and we were forced to study other subjects, religious studies, history. I know I might be interested in reading about these outside my curriculum, but I want to develop these skills, these important ones that will help me in the field. Education is not about making you an expert in a certain field or a certain subject. It's about the process of learning. Many students around the world end up changing their major. And if they just didn't learn the process of learning, they will really never make it in the field. It's the process that will make you adaptable to change. So, I ask my followers again, do you fully support integrating technology into education? 70% said yes. I mean, 30% can be convinced by the 70% later, though. Um, so if you look, 95% of the voters believe that the education system right now is not working and needs to be fixed. And 70% believe that technology could be a solution. But we don't always have to blame education for our faults. Sometimes it could be our mistakes and we have to revisit what we're doing. And this brings me to a very serious question to all of you. And I'd like you to answer. Are you really satisfied with your job or whatever you're doing now? If you are, please raise your hand. Well, that's actually, I would say, 40%. <laughs> 40 to 50. Well, to the rest of you, I would say it's never too late. If the education system didn't ignite your interest or help you discover it, or didn't provide you the environment that you needed, then it's time to create it. Thank you. <laughs>